Welcome to Military Money, where I show young service members how I win with money and how they can do it too. We love to spend money. It's a fact. We're all guilty of it and it's okay. But we love to spend money when we don't have any. In fact, 41% of Gen Z feels pressured to showcase their wealth. And that's crazy, especially if you don't have any. We've all seen it. People on Instagram and social media flexing their $7 that they have in cash. Don't be like that. The average American carries $22,000 in personal debt. That's a lot of debt. Now, if that's you, that's okay. There's a way out of it. We're going to go through that in this series. But for now, we're just going to talk about spending. How do I control my spending? Before we get into that, let's talk about why we spend our money. We spend money for several reasons. We spend money when we're bored, when we're sad, when we celebrate because of peer pressure, or when we're happy. I can go on and on. The point is there's so many reasons and opportunities for us to spend our money every single day. We just have to learn how to control those tendencies when we can. And nobody's going to get this stuff right on the very first try. I'm not the best with money, but I used to be terrible with money. And I wish I had some of these lessons when I was younger because I'd be in a different spot right now. But I can't change that. What I can do is help you in case you see yourself going down a road that maybe you don't like too much. We'll get you back on track. Here are four steps that can lead to spending less money. And that's the key word, can. It's not a promise. It's not a guarantee because it depends on a few things. It depends on you, your discipline, your drive. It depends on how much you want to set yourself up for a successful future. The four categories are these. Trimming the fat, having a playbook, paper versus plastic, and DIY. DIY meaning do it yourself. Trimming the fat. What exactly do I mean by that? There are things that you pay for that you don't need. Shocker. I know. Honestly, there's a really good chance that there's probably things that you're paying for on a monthly or yearly basis that you don't even realize. It just shows up out of nowhere and you're like, oh yeah, I forgot to cancel that. Where'd that come from? Where's my money? This is where you're going to have to do a deep dive in your own personal finances and it might get ugly. What subscriptions do you have? Do I need all those subscriptions? If I pay for Hulu, Disney Plus, Netflix, Paramount Plus, YouTube TV, and ESPN Plus, I can't watch all those things all at once. Why am I paying? for them all. And you start to ask yourself, do I need those things? You might want all of those things. There's a really good chance that you don't need all of them. This will be an exercise in identifying wants and needs. And this is tough because you're going to have to be very, very honest with yourself and transparent or else you're not going to get anywhere. You're just going to be stuck exactly where you are. So this is one of our first exercises in discipline. Having a playbook. What does that mean? One of the best ways for someone to control their spending is to have a plan. Some people call it a budget, but so many people have negative connotations and reactions to that word. So let's call it a spending plan. If you fail to plan, you're probably going to plan to fail. It's cliche, but it's true. Your income is your largest wealth building tool. Why on earth would you not want to have a plan for that? We'll get into budgeting down the road, but just a quick tidbit on that. There is no way for you to control or improve your spending if you don't know exactly how much money is coming in and exactly how much is going out and for what. I can ask you right now, how much did you spend on gas in the month of July? If you had a spending plan, you would know exactly to the dollar how much you spent on gas and whether or not you were over or under. Yeah, it takes a little more work, but it's worth it. The next thing, paper versus plastic. When using a credit or debit card, you will spend 12 to 18% more money than you would have if you just carried cash. But why is that? Swiping a plastic card, there's no emotion connected to it. You hand somebody a card and then you get the card and the product back all in one transaction. It almost feels like it's not real or you're not spending your own money because sometimes you're not spending your own money. It's a credit card. You're spending the bank's money, not yours. It's basically not impacting your brain enough for it to leave some kind of emotional reaction to where you want to fix it. Now, if you carried cash and had a spending plan, you would pull out that cash and then you hand the cash over and then you receive a product, but you don't get the cash back. It feels a little different. It feels like you've lost something because you did. You lost your cash. That's why you spend less money when you carry cash. Some people might be different. They might say, oh, I might spend all the cash I have. If I have cash in my wallet, it's gone. If I have cash in my pocket, so long, it's gone. Consider it spent. But for the majority of people, it hurts to see that money go and then just disappear into thin air. Now for the DIY part, the do it yourself. This goes especially for you guys in the barracks. Eat at the barracks or in the defect. The average price of a home cooked meal is $4.31. Yes, that means you go to the grocery store you go to the commissary, you get food. You might not have a full stove in your barracks room, but maybe you have a microwave, maybe you have a little hot pot, a hot plate, a griddle, something. When you go out to eat, the average cost is actually $20.37. That's a big difference. You're literally eating your money. I've had so many soldiers come up to me and they said, Sergeant Vargas, where's my money going? And I say, well, young soldier, go ahead and print out all your bank statements and let's go over it. And then we go over the bank statements and they're spending all their money on food. If you were to look at your soldier's bank statements right now, I guarantee you most of them are going to say this, Domino's, Shop at, Buffalo Wild Wings, McDonald's, McDonald's, liquor store, vape shop, shop at 2 a.m. taco truck. It's out of control. Look, I don't want to be just negative, but spending can be very, very dangerous, especially when it's out of control and you don't know how to stop it. There are four types of money. Money you owe, money you grow, money you give, and money you live. What the heck does that mean? Money you owe, debt, money you grow, investing, money you live, just the day-to-day -day rent and expenses, and money you give. That's things like charity, church, stuff like that, giving gifts. Spend less on living and owing and invest more in giving and growing. Unfortunately, everywhere you go on base, there's going to be an opportunity or a 
temptation to spend tons and tons of money. Some of the money you don't have. You go to the PX and they try to talk you into the military star card so you can spend more and save more money. Your uniforms and gear you need for work are expensive. So then you use the star card clothing portion so you can save money, but you're also spending more money. Every single business right outside the base knows exactly when you get paid and how to get that money out of your pockets. Those companies have done so much research on you, they know you better than you know you. Your friends are going to want you to go out on a Friday night or a Saturday night after a long work week. You have to learn this very powerful word. It's a classic word. It's very it's very strong. It's very easy and simple, and it holds a lot of weight. That word is no. Just say no. Your buddy's like, hey, do you want to go out on Friday even though you're $40 overdrawn in your bank? You just say no. Your boyfriend or girlfriend's like, hey, I really want this, but I can't afford it. You say, no, I can't either. Just say no. I'll leave you with these three takeaways about spending. The first thing is be content with what you have or what you've been provided. This is a really big one. It takes a lot of discipline, and honestly, it takes a lot of maturity. You have to be thankful for what you already have. It's going to make you spend less money. It's going to make you want things less if you're just content with what you've been given or what you can afford. You might not be happy with your iPhone, your car, the numbers in your bank account, the clothes you're wearing, but trust me, you're a lot better off than some people that I've seen. There's somebody always doing worse than you, I promise. So just be happy with what you have. The next thing is living below your means. What the heck is that? That kind of goes hand in hand with contentment. If you start a spending plan and you stick to it and then you get promoted, let's say from E4 to E5 and you get a pay jump, that's when lifestyle creep starts to happen and you start spending more money because you're making more money. No, don't do that. Live below your means. Pretend like you're still making that E4 paycheck and save the rest. Save the difference. Nothing changed. Your bills didn't change as soon as you get promoted. They don't up your phone bill. They don't up your rent. Maybe they will. I don't know. Hopefully not. So figure out how much it costs you to live and then spend less money than that. The last thing is thinking about your future self. Make decisions today that your future self, your 40, 50, 60 year old self will thank you for. One of the worst things you can do is live by hindsight because then you know exactly what you should have done and when you should have done it, but it's too late at that point. Just remember all this money you're spending and all the money you could be saving and investing is going to go to your future self and it might be nothing. It might be a little, it might be a lot. It's going to be very, very boring. I promise you. It's not the most fun thing. It's not the most amazing thing in the world, but I don't want to see you greeting people at Walmart when you're 75 years old. So live smart today, make good decisions today so that your future self can relax. If you liked anything you heard, make sure you subscribe, follow, give me some likes, throw down some stuff in the comments if you have any questions. There's going to be more stuff like this down the road. Make sure you follow me, Silly Goose.